Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you today from the territory of the signatories to Treaty 7, and I'd also like to acknowledge the Métis people of Alberta who share a very deep connection with this land. I'm also joined today by my colleagues, Kathleen Ganley, Joe Sisi, and Irfan Sabir. This is a day many of us had hoped would never come. The destruction of basic human rights for hundreds of millions of people in what was once one of the world's greatest democracies. Only a short drive from where I'm standing today, our neighbors are being stripped of the right to make decisions about their own bodies. Today's ruling by the Supreme Court of the United States is abhorrent. It destroys generations of hard-won progress towards equality for women, girls, and all people who can become pregnant. I'm also deeply troubled by the legal implications for 2S plus LGBTQ people in the United States and their rights, their right to marry and to simply live openly, safely, and with respect. Lives will be ruined as a result of this court decision and make no mistake, people will die. I know that people across the democratic world are horrified by what is happening in the United States today. I am horrified. But we would also be naive to think that this is a somewhere else problem. The same extremists who have prevailed in the United States today are hard at work here in Canada and Alberta as well. Elections have consequences. We know that many members of the UCP caucus and cabinet are explicitly supported by anti-choice extremists. And anti-abortion politicians cannot be allowed to duck this issue. It is both inadequate and dangerous for leaders to say things like, I am anti-abortion, but I won't impose my view because the matter is already settled. As we have learned today, the matter is not settled. It was not settled in the US and frankly, human rights are never settled. They must always be protected because in the absence of that vigilant protection, human rights will be attacked and removed as they were today. And not only can the fundamental human right to reproductive health care be overtly attacked, like we are seeing today in the U.S., it can be attacked in an underhanded manner, such that it slowly becomes less accessible. Access to abortion and to health care generally for women and girls and LGBTQ2S plus people is not good enough in Alberta, and it is slipping backwards as we speak. It is for this reason that I call today on every UCP leadership candidate for the job of Premier of this province to definitively state that they will never do anything to undermine the fundamental right to reproductive health care for women, girls, and people who can become pregnant. I'm proud of the work that we did when we were in government. We provided full co public coverage of Mifigamiso, the abortion pill, for Albertans. We passed legislation to better prevent the harassment of Albertans seeking an abortion and a safer environment for both staff and patients. But while we stood up to protect these Albertans by establishing these bubble zones around abortion clinics, UCP MLAs all walked out of the chamber. We began work to expand access to clinical abortion outside of Alberta's major cities, work that the UCP halted. While I'm proud of the progress that we made in government, we also knew that there was still more to do. And once again, I give Albertans my categorical, my categorical guarantee that an NDP government will protect and advance reproductive rights here in Alberta and to the extent that we can across the country. On this, there can be no compromise. So I'll be happy to take any questions you might have. Okay, we'll start with questions in the room. Okay, seeing none, we'll go to questions on the line. We'll go to our first caller. Hi, 
Hi, Rachel. It's Lisa Johnson calling from the Edmonton Journal. Um, I'm wondering, a lot of uh, news stories coming out of the United States uh, involve different states preparing for an influx of -of out-of-state residents in order to access the health care that they need. Um, I'm just doing a scan of of some of our neighbors down south. Uh, It sounds like Montana um, is not is probably not going to trigger uh, making abortion illegal, but I'm wondering if there's a worry on your end about an influx of of Americans coming to Alberta to access abortion. Well, you know, the people I worry most for, of course, are those Americans. Um, and, And I worry for what they will have to do in order to get here if that becomes the case. Um, Obviously, I think um, that we need to do everything we can to protect the fundamental human rights of people uh, who are our neighbors. Um, But obviously, uh, you know, we would be concerned about uh, costs, um, but at the end of the day, I think we'll also need to do what's right. Um, And if those costs become significant, Presumably, we would have an opportunity to to address that with the federal government. But I will say that my my first uh, instinct is just to make sure that we are able to do whatever we can to protect the fundamental human rights uh, of uh, our neighbours to the south. Did you have a follow-up, Lisa? Uh, Yeah, and and correct me on the details here if if I'm wrong, but my understanding is in 2018, um, when you were in government, proposed uh, opening up a new clinic in Lethbridge. I'm wondering if you would specifically call for that today because it is in closer proximity to the U.S. border. I mean, I think what we need to do is expand uh, reproductive health care across the province. Um, And so just because it's uh, adjacent to the U.S. border, uh, that may well make it more urgent, although as you rightly say, I mean, it doesn't appear as though Montana will be a trigger state at this point, although I think we all know that there are some uh, states uh, who are also at risk that are not trigger states. Um, But uh, really what we need to be doing is expanding access to abortion services uh, outside of our major cities uh, in a number of places across the province, uh, including Lethbridge. Any other questions, Lisa? Uh, Where where specifically would you suggest? I mean, the last time we spoke about this, you you suggested that um, you're, if elected, you, you would look at and do a, a sort of um, analysis of what services are available across the province and, and kind of determine where the most need is. But is there anywhere specific um, other than Lethbridge that you would point to? Um, honestly, at this point, because I don't have access to the latest information around where uh, these services are provided, and quite honestly, um, at this point, there are places where they're provided, um, but um, it, it's there are reasons for why not everybody knows, which is um, another problem, uh, but not one that I'm going to wade into now without having the authority to fix it. Um, so uh, suffice to say, we know there are many communities around the province where it's not adequate, um, and and we need to do a, a clear assessment of where they are, and then make sure that we can um, provide those those services where um, where people don't currently have them. Okay, we'll go to our next caller, Dylan Short. Uh, hi, yeah, the, today you're, you know, you're calling on the UCP members to stand up and, and say they're not going to undermine any of these fundamental rights. I guess, is there anything that your caucus is preparing to bring forward in the legislature, whether that's, you know, private member bills or just calling on members actually in the legislature um, to, to sort of put this out there officially? And if so, what might that look like? Well, of course, the, the challenge that we have is that the legislature is not sitting right now and it's not scheduled to return until the end of October. So that's why today I'm just publicly putting the challenge to these um, UCP candidates uh, between now and the time that uh, they make the selection for who becomes the premier, because that's going to happen before we get into the legislature. And let me be perfectly clear. Um, Jason Kenney claimed... Uh, that nobody needed to worry about this issue while he was Premier. Now, honestly, I never entirely believe that, and there's good reason not to have. However, what we know is by his own description, 
he was pushed out of office by what he referred to as right-wing extremists. And now we have a number of UCP um, candidates for leadership of this province who are in the midst of competing for the support of the very same extremists who pushed Jason Kenney out of office. And so that is why it is so incredibly important to all Albertans, not just UCP voters, but to all Albertans who will be having one of these candidates take on the role of Premier uh, between now and the time we next go into the legislature, it is important to all of these Albertans for uh, all of these candidates to declare categorically that they will not ever act to undermine this fundamental basic human right enjoyed by women, girls, and all people who can become pregnant. Did you have a follow-up, Dylan? I think that's it for me. Thanks. Okay, we'll do one more pass for questions on the line. Just a reminder to press star nine if you're joining by phone and raise hand function if you're joining by Zoom. And seeing none, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching and to learn more, check out albertasfuture.ca.